15 years old Abdul Samad Sheikh Hussein of Kansas City, Missouri, died on Saturday, December 6, 2014, when a man deliberately drove his vehicle into him as he was leaving a local mosque. Locals have said the man has been harassing the community with anti-Islamic taunts and violent threats. Also, Mustafa Mazan, a 28 years old Canadian Muslim man who was shot and killed inside his home on February 10, 2015. And the recent execution style killing of our three winners, Dia Barak, 23 years old, his wife Yusor Azba Saha, 21 years old, and her sister Razan Abu Saha, 19 years old, who were killed execution style inside their home on Tuesday, February 11, 2015, in Champlain Hill, North Carolina. In the light of increasing anti-Muslim hate crime in the U.S. and abroad, organizers from Students for Justice in Palestine at John Jay held a vigil for victims of Islamophobia and hate-based violence. Students gathered during community hours in Room 109 to also discuss Islamophobia in our community and highlight the hypocrisy of the media and its role in creating and supporting violence against Muslims, Arabs, and those who are perceived to be Muslims and Arabs. Right? This man, Chris Kyle, if you look at the reality of his story, right, he wasn't this like all lovey dovey. Of, of course, he suffered from PTSD, I'm not going to undermine that. But he also looked at Arabs and at Muslims and said it like, it's like he said, when I'm at war, it's like I feel like I'm in a jungle and I'm hunting for animals. He called Arabs and Muslims animals, he called people. Statements. He saw them as animals, right, that he was hunting them down. You do find it inside to forgive them because what we need to be doing is teach people to self-educate themselves and do their own research aside from what they were raised on. That's what we need to be doing. Thank you. So went crazy. And I also specifically remember after, maybe like a year or two after 9-11, there uh, was a girl that came in late. She was like a transfer student and she was an Arab. And she, her last name was Hassan. And every single time that the teacher would pass roll call, she would re, like get up real fast, go up to the front and tell the teacher not to call her name out. And at that moment, I didn't understand what was going on in her mind. So when you're raised in a place where you don't understand religion, because we don't, when you're nine years old, you don't understand why you're raised Roman Catholic, you don't understand why you're raised a certain way, you just know that that's what you're supposed to follow. You don't understand why someone would be scared of saying their name out, because that's what she, what she was. I don't think she was particularly ashamed, but she was afraid of what people were gonna think or what people were gonna do to her at the moment that, that her last name was what it was, was. I understand how Islam religion is being affected because as a Mexican-American, we also been treated unequal and unfair within the United States by the Anglos, just like they did with the Trail of Tears Native Americans, and then they went back to the uh, African slaves, and then they attacked the Mexican undocumented immigrants in the, you know, California, Texas, and I feel like everything is now, like, you know, they're focusing more, they're trying to target the Islam, people of Muslim and Islam religion. With all the murders caused by Islamophobia throughout history, saying Muslim lives matter is only a saying that has no legitimacy. We can bluntly say Muslim lives do not matter in this country and abroad. This is the result of leadership not addressing the core problem of hetero white settler colonialist ideology and constantly perpetrating parasitic ideologies into institutions affecting oppressed nationalities everywhere. These ideologies do not serve the people and need to be seized immediately.